Here, you can exercise your rights to freedom every day without leaving your home. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. Not a hostile takeover of the evening news. You are indeed watching Real Talk with me, Anne Doda, live on SABC3 in our new primetime slot, Anne. <laughs> Listen, we have an incredible guest later on the show. She's unashamedly bold in more ways than one, super confident, and she's always dreamed of being on television. And in just a short space of time, she has seemingly done and dealt with it all. Roles on TV, in radio, internet trolls, motherhood, and a much publicized separation from her child's father. Time and experience in the cutthroat entertainment industry has made her toughen up. So stick around because after our rundown of entertainment news with uh, Phil Mbella, I'll be with rising star Dando Duma. Welcome, the good doctor of entertainment. Phil, what up? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Listen, never a dull moment mm -hmm. in this country of ours. Yes. You even wore a suit for the occasion. Hey, hey, it's prime time, eh? We need to look the part. <laughs> hey now, hey now. So here we go. Uh, yeah. what, what are the pressing stories of the week? Um, I think the biggest news in television right now is the softest. Oh, Safta Top yes, nominees. Yes, yes, Congrats yes, yes, yes. to everyone. Yeah, the nominees were held on the 2nd of February, which was on Friday yeah. here in Johannesburg. And um, the SABC uh, got a lot of nominees for that. But we're not going to talk about the nominees per se. We're only going to talk about the people who decided that they're not going to be part of the Saftas. Okay, before we do that, yeah. let's give out, like, like, just a shout out to our people that got there. <laughs> so, is Dingo's in yes, there, yes, right? Yes, so, Dingo's in there. Uh, Pabim so Pabim Loy. Okay. Can you talk about Pamela's nomination or should I go about uh, the way? Why are we talking about uh, Because it made no sense to me, you yeah. know? Because uh, here's the thing I, I don't understand why we do this in South Africa where you have somebody from a panel show being singled out as uh -huh. the best presenter. I mean, when you look at the show training essay, it's a panel show. Uh -huh. It's not Pabi Muloy presenting a show mm. with other people. It's a panel show. So it surprised me yeah. to see her being nominated um, alone being singled out. But Bonnie was nominated exactly. last I mean, year. The, uh, and also, is it not because she's, she's the lead? She's the one, she's the glue. So she's the lead and everyone else... Look, you've got a moderator, yes, but okay. nowhere in the world you will see that. You will never see the view saying we're only going to nominate Whoopi because Whoopi's a moderator. Okay. When you nominate a show like that for hosting, it's a team. So, so you nominate you everybody on that. She'd be nominated for best talk show and not necessarily best talk show host. It could have been nominated for best talk show host, but as the whole, the whole squad, the, the whole squad being nominated as one. Maybe they can't make enough statues. Oh, please! Imagine they would. Then they would make nine statues. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's give some props to um, one of my favorite shows of 2017, by the way, uh, Bedford Wives. It never got the attention that it deserved, but I think it was done well, and yes. I actually enjoyed it. I agree um, with you. We've got Man Cave, uh, Chicken Media. Hey, there we go, Man Cave. <laughs> Man Cave. Uh, is nominated for Best uh, Magazine and Variety Show. Okay. Okay. Now so that those we've are done the SABC props, shows. Let's talk about uh, people who said they're not going to submit. Okay. Um, for the, I think the third or the second time in a row, uh, Mubango has pulled out. Uh -huh. They've not submitted their, their, their talent or their production for nomination, um, as well as Generations. Now, we can sit here and talk about the reasons why they do it, blah, 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 but um, I want to talk about what that does for the talent. You know, I was talking yeah. to a friend uh, um, recently, and I was saying that as much as we can say that awards don't matter, but they do matter because when you leave this country and go work outside, yes. people want to know how your people perceive you. Yeah. So these awards may not matter to us, but when you go overseas and say, I'm an LM daughter, an award-winning yeah. South African, do you know what I mean? That carries some weight. And uh, I feel like sometimes when these production companies, through whatever reasons they have, decide not to allow their talent to submit for things like that, yeah. they're depriving them of an opportunity okay, to I'll be Okay, I'll take them Yeah. Um, sometimes I respect when people say we're not going to enter an award show yeah. purely based on the, the judges mm. and the criteria, criteria that is used. Yeah. Because like Mfuni Vundla says, you yeah. cannot have somebody who is currently working on a soapy yeah. judging another soapy. Fair because enough. bias will yes. come into play. Exactly. And also, if you look at the judges, if 70% mm. of them are old Afrikaans, white men, mm -hmm. right, then obviously they won't have any affiliation to generations. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yes, then Bina Landers is going to win all the time and maybe Seven and London, things like that, because that's yeah. what they know. Mm. So if you fix the judging system, then, then, and make it level and all around, and have people who are not in the industry, have people who are just, who are, what are they called, thought leaders judging, no, no, but that then I get work. it. But here's the thing, though, like, even in America, when you look at
look at the Oscars uh, the Academy. Yes, okay? that's why there's the, an issue. <laughs> yeah, the people who nominate are people who actually are in the industry. Yes. There's people who have been nominated before mm. who now end up being uh, 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 part of uh, the nomi uh, uh, thing, the voters on the panel. Yeah. Do you understand? So it's not like this is just a South African thing where you have actors choosing actors yeah. <laughs> to be nominated. No, it happens with all the awards everywhere in, in the world. I, I, but my thing is that if you want to fix something, be part of it. Be part of it. Do you understand? It. Because you can't sit on the sideline and criticize and not really But also, if, solve if, it. The, if the most watched soapies in the country yeah. are not entering, then surely your award show also are suffering enough. But then again, let's, just be, let, let, let's be real here for a second, hey? Just because a show is most watched doesn't mean that it deserves to be nominated or But that's or why they wanted. don't. They, there's this perception, it's like, it's, it's trash, but it's the most watched. You know, like, yeah. it's that thing of quality is not always quantity. Do you yes. know what I'm saying? And that's what they're fighting. So I, that, I, I can hear it. I hear you, but I can yes. also hear it. Okay, okay, fair, fair, fair enough. Okay, can we move on? Please. <laughs> I'm moving on to films right now. The biggest story right now in, in film in South Africa, obviously, is Ingleba. Yeah. Ingleba is causing a lot of controversy and a lot of ruckus, mm. uh, some of which warranted, some of which is debatable. Mm. Uh, but for now, I want us to talk about how... Having this film being pulled from cinemas is affecting our film industry. Mm. Because as somebody who's been following the film industry for the past five years, I can tell you that films in South Africa are not doing that great. Mm. Uh, especially black films. Black films are not performing well at the cinemas. And mm. that's not to say that black people are not going to see films. The reality is that South Africans are going to see films. Is the controversy not causing a lot more feet through the doors of the cinemas? It would if now cinemas were not being forced to shut down because well, that's one thing. By the Do you understand? Threat, yes, yeah. because once you're saying that people cannot go see this film, you are stopping the revenue stream of mm. those filmmakers. And the idea that um, if you are uncomfortable about the certain content, mm. then everybody else must not have access to it. I cannot subscribe to that. Do you understand? Mm. And when you look at the numbers, you look at 2016, 1.4 billion rand in ticket sales was made in South African cinemas in sure. 2016. Of that 1.4 billion, only 68 million rand went to South African, South African films. Film. So people are going to go film, f see films, but they're not going to see our films. And part of the reasons why that happens is because we are allocated a limited number of, of, thing, of screens. opening weekend counts. Exactly, yeah. you understand. And if you ask uh, our distributors and you ask film uh, cinemas why they're doing that, they will tell you that South African films are high risk. So they can yeah. allocate, uh, let's say, 100 screens for South African films. Mm. And you find that in every cinema, there's only like two or three people in that screen. So it's not a good return on investment for the distributors or the cinemas themselves. So it made sense for them to allocate them s smaller numbers. Mm. But now, when you have a situation like this now where when people are uncomfortable with the content of a film now, there's going to be shut down or whatever, mm. that also increases the risk factor of mm. South African films. So now... Mm. The only films that we're going to be seeing on television are the Leon Schuster films and all these slapstick comedies coming out of South Africa. It's so funny. Safe. Leon Schuster has been portraying us in, in the strangest of ways. And I saw no one, exactly. uh, you know, boycotting the Tina. We are scared of with these people constantly in Texas, constantly scared of snakes, constantly painted mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a strange way. And they didn't protest that. But and somehow we are okay with that. You understand? And my, 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 my thing is that, do you think like... A Holini Kiwa right now working on a script, yeah. a film script that is, has nothing to do with, you know, slapstick comedy and whatever, and pretending yeah. and whatever. Which is, if he's writing a script with a very strong story, uh, a story that would make us think, do yeah. you think that when he goes into that room to negotiate for screens or to negotiate for distribution, he's going to be allowed to have as much fanfare and whatever as Fifty Shades of what, what? Mm. It's not going to happen. Okay, listen, um, you and I will chat next week. Thank you so much for bringing another oh, aspect pleasure. to this Inglaiba mm. debate because we've all just been looking at the traditional, you know, the Tosa men that are, yeah. you know, where the sacred ritual is being exposed to the rest of the world. And that's been the debate, but we've never looked at the bottom line and we've never looked at the numbers and exactly. we've never looked at the industry as a whole. We love you for that. Listen, uh, that's all the time we have with Phil for this evening. Always a pleasure, Phil. Coming up next, years ago, we were introduced to her bubbly character and infectious smile on Crazy. This was soon to be followed by more TV presenting and acting roles and then radio as part of the Touch HD stable. Stay tuned. This is Real Talk live at 6 p.m.
And welcome back. Look, we first fell in love with Ndando when she won the Crazy Presenter Search in 2014. And soon after, she got her first acting role on Rhythm City with a booming career at just 22 years old. She's become a household name in the entertainment industry from presenting to acting and even music of late. Ndando Duma is simply doing it all. She's also a mom, gave birth to a beautiful daughter, Smashe, who she calls Fatty Monroe. Uh, seven months ago, this all happened. Ndando joined Touch HD, hosting a daily one-hour show called Black Twitter Unleashed, which focuses on trending topics on social media, and she's just landed a new television show based on Nation. Shortly before this, she surprised many fans when she featured on a comp track alongside Babes Waduma. Ladies and gentlemen, the bubbly, the pretty, the talented Ndando Fliki Swaduma. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, this is how we work. Is it? Okay, okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. This is how this one's gonna go today, by the way. We're just gonna move everything here. I swear, I say to people when I find out that you'd confirm to come, I was like, she's one of the, I, I, I don't ever wanna be young again. I love being old, I love getting older, but you're one yeah. of the few people who make me just miss my youth. Really? I look at you, I'm like, ah, gumnand. Oh my God, no gumnand, eh? Gumnand, It's nice to be there. It is, actually. And it you is. embrace it and, you know, you're not saying I'm an old, mature woman, but you're not saying I'm a young kid. You're just like, listen, this is where I am and this way I'm going. Yes, definitely. Do you like purposely plan your life? Like, okay, fine, this is what I want next, so I'm gonna do that. I wouldn't say I plan, but I know uh, where I'm actually going. So mm. it goes um, where it's supposed to go, but mm. honestly, I don't sit down and say, actually today I'm gonna wake up and smile and do all of these things, mm. you know? I think I've got a very, you know, very loud personality and uh, when I start doing things, you know, it, it, you know, but also, yes, you know, <laughs> so uh, I don't think that I actually sit down and say today, I'm going to do this and that. But what I know is I do everything and uh, with everything, I make sure that I'm happy. You commit to it. Y yes. Uh. Uh, so what I loved and not many people in entertainment will admit to this, whereas I, I think 99% of people, yes. this is how it goes. What I love is when you said that you try to be 500 people you know, but finally you found that, you know what, being Dando is what works best, right? Absolutely. So these 500 people, run me through a few people that you would watch on TV and think to yourself, I want to be there, I want to be her, I want to be him. Um, honestly speaking, uh, I think when I was young, uh. I used to look up to a lot of a lot of people. Like yeah. you know, you, I know everyone looks up to Monang, and like yes. I want to be Monang. I also want to be a TV presenter, and we, we start actually sounding like Monang. You know, when we go to these auditions, my first audition ever, I actually sounded like Monang. Like, really? Good evening. You? I'm like, oh my god, no. But did you know, know that you sounded like her? Well, no. I, but I actually, yes, I did. Okay, because yeah. obviously you aspire to be the best. So if she's yes. there, you're like, I want to be her. Yes, and okay. I realized in the long, uh, uh, on the way, would say actually, being my, myself would actually make me very, very, very great, mm. you know? Because I've seen Minente, I've seen Pelmo Diadi, which is one of the greatest women, one of the most phenomenal women I look up to in the industry, Ayanda Tabete. Mm. They're very, very, very great. But also, uh, I think I'm also great on my, you know, yes. in my own, you know, caliber. Uh, and, uh, um, wow, um, yo, wow. <laughs> so, okay, so you got, you went to an, an audition at UOTV, you didn't get it. Yes, you went to an it was audition. my first audition when I was 13 years old. Yeah, and then first you were ever. also MTV, also Soweto TV, even yes. you did a bit of street radio. Yes, I, I did a little bit of Vow FM as well. I, I worked for Soweto TV for like three days, yes. Why three days? Uh, well, I went to audition for So It's a TV, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, I never got the gig, but I, you know, I was like the second runner up. And they actually liked me, the producers, they liked me. And then they called me to say, Dando, come through and guest present the show. Oh. And I think, oh, trend you know, on So It's a TV. Because <laughs> the show was trending for the first time ever on social media when I got there to okay. actually co host the show with the presenter. And they actually liked me. They called me again to say, come through and do this. And they called me again. And I was like, actually, I'm tired of doing this co hosting thing. I want to have my own show. I also want to be, you know, a star, mm. you know? Mm. And I was like, okay, I'll go there for the last time. And if it doesn't work with something else, because honestly speaking, 
where I, need, I never wanted anything to do with auditioning ever again after Soul to TV. Yeah, because, I mean, you, you, you obviously want to give up when you've gone to, like, six or seven. And, and it was more than that. It was way more than that. And I was really tired. Also, I would question myself if I, I was enough for the industry. Uh, am I good enough? Am I, am I pretty enough? Or am I intelligent enough? And I was like, actually, maybe this is not for me, you know? Maybe Ooh. I do love it, but maybe it's just not for me. Okay, but then surely somebody... For you to be able to start going even to the first edition, somebody said to you, you good, you should try this. Mm. So who, who was that person for Nobody. you? Nobody. So Myself. you told yourself? Yes. And then when I was in grade nine, I wanted to be an advocate. I was like, I want to be an advocate, I want to be a nurse, I wanna... and I decided actually grade 10, this is what I want to do. Ah. And no, 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 grade six, grade seven, Grade six, grade seven, I wanted to be all these, you know, uh, professional things. Learned. Uh, yes, you know. <laughs> so in grade eight, that's when I realized, actually, this is what I want. Mm. I want to be on TV. I want to be a superstar. I want to do all these amazing things. But in the years, I can do all these things, but I want to be on TV, mm. you know. And uh, I actually saw uh, a, a, an ad, you know. Is this when you stole your mom's phone? Yes. Mm, please. <laughs> huh? Huh? Look at no, you. I had to. <laughs> Look at me now. Moms. Moms. I'll buy you airtime. You know? <laughs> so you see an ad on TV, what does it say? Uh, it says, if you are the ages between of 13 and 8, 17 and you want to be on TV, uh, make sure that you SMS it. I'm like, oh, SMS, okay. I got, I got my mom's phone. I did the SMSing thing. I got uh, a confirmation SMS back to say, uh, okay, we're confirming you come through and audition at Maponya Mall. And I was like, yes. But now I have to go tell my mom that I actually did this with her, with a phone, and she has to actually take me there, yes. you know, because I was I was still in my you need a like, guardian. Yeah. Yes. So I told her like, oh God, I like, uh, uh, my TV. Hey, it's his routine. And I'm like, but El, actually, I want to go. So this girl from Orange Farm who grew up without a dad, uh, who can't even speak proper English even now, but you know what? It doesn't matter because you I, can understand I, what I, I'm saying you know. to you. <laughs> so now you you make it right. And it's all, it fascinates me. So then you're on the set, say, of, you know, Rhythm City, or you're on the set, and you see people like Wotem Bissiete, Libo Shubin Boya, right? Do you, do, do you get it? Do you ask for a selfie immediately, or you're like, wait, I work here every day, so I'm going to see them every day? Like, how do you balance between being a fan girl and knowing that? But, I mean, I'm here. Uh, wow. I, I think the first time, first ever, um, I think... Rhythm City said, yes. Uh, when I went for my second audition for a callback, I saw Tembi Siete. First time ever, and I really, really adore her. Yeah. You know, she's like my favorite person. And also she has become a sister to me. Uh. Uh, and a mom, a mother. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I first saw her and I was like, you know, for a, for, for a moment, and I was like, okay, let me just greet her. Let me just come down, Dando, come down. And I said, hello, sister. I'm like, hi. Uh, and she didn't even know that she, we were going at, at, to the same place yes. to audition for the, you know, yeah. uh, for a mother and daughter um, oh. carrying, yes. So I went there, and we got to the same building. Like, oh, I'm going to I'm like, yes. And I'm like, uh, yeah. Can I take a selfie? I'm like, yes, but I couldn't because I, I intend. Like, if I miss this opportunity, <laughs> then it's over for me, you know. But now you're here, and uh, one of the ladies that you work with, yes, when she found out that you're coming, she was just like, I have to send a message. So roll it. My love and Ando, in a world where everybody wears masks, it is such a privilege to see such a beautiful soul. I began your journey with you on your first on-screen television actress, and I just couldn't keep you at bay. I couldn't keep you in my arms. My baby, you're a renegade, and you're going places. You're flying high. Fleeky, so I still don't believe that you had a baby before me, and you almost outshone me at my own wedding. <laughs> you know, the love and respect and the dedication I have for you your family and your craft. I believe so much in you. I believe so much in you. I know that I will always hold you so close to my heart and to my soul. I love you so much, Fligiswa. Oh my God, you guys. See you later. Wow. And she didn't even get paid to say that. <laughs> she she will do anything for me. Oh. Uh, yes, I know. Oh my God. I'm even. 
Wow. Okay, we are going to take an ad break so we can powder our noses and fix our eyes. Uh, and Dando is living her dream. It's been only four years since she landed her first presenter role and already she's made some impressive moves in her career. I mean, listen to the way Libby speaks about her. Her edgy fashion sense and striking good looks have definitely made her stand out amongst her peers. But behind the doll face and being the mom that she is today is a painful past that she's had to work hard to move beyond. We'll chat about that after the break. And we're back with Real Talk right here on ACBC3. Just hello, guys. Hello there to my audience. Say hello. Shine. Shine. Uh, you know, they stalk in Dando. That's why they're here. Uh, listen, I'll let you guys ask a few questions uh, before we wrap up the show. Uh, our guest today, Dando Duma, grew up in Orange Farm in a shack with her parents and her older siblings. Before the lights, the cameras, and the fame, her childhood was fraught with trauma and anxiety because of growing up in an abusive home. Not only that, she's had to endure years of bullying and insults because of her looks. I mean, guys, what's there to hate about this look? Little did they all know that her looks would someday be part of the X factor that would catapult her to stardom. This is Real Talk with Ndano Duma, and we've got her here today. So, born in Soweto. Yes. And then you moved to Orange Farm. Yes. Now, there's conflict in, in when, when I read up about you and I follow you is, was your dad part of your life in Soweto? Was he part of your life in Orange Farm? Um, he was uh, a part of my life in Soweto. In Soweto. Yes. So you guys was part of moving to Orange Farm part of just getting away from him or uh, had he then passed away already? Uh, no, he passed away when I was 13, when I was in grade 8. Uh. Uh, but we stayed with my mom and my dad. Uh. Uh, actually, I can't even remember. But I know the, the only uh, 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 time I remember, you know, Baba was when he actually set the house on fire mm. uh, while we were inside with my mom, right? He was... He was I, I don't really know him, but I know he, apparently he loved me so much because i right? So I'm going to go and I was like the most loved. Mm. So uh, apparently I never really felt the love. I never knew the love of, 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 of um, f coming from a father figure, you mm. know. Um, but the last time I actually heard of my dad was when he set the house on fire, a shack on fire. Mm. I think he was just fine. He, they had like an argument with my mom. He was really, he was a very violent person. Mm. You know, he was a taxi driver. Mm. Yeah, so, you know, you already know if you still got a taxi driver. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. So he was really violent. He was really abusive towards my mom as well. So when we start crying, Kalalan, Kalalan, I'm like, whoa, okay. So, but he was still young at that time. So we just cry and cry and uh. cry. But the last time, the last, last time I heard about my dad was when um, he set this, the house on fire. Instead of just knocking and say, saying, we didn't Dini, because he also, he used to drink a lot. He used to drink a lot. Yes. So he set the house on fire. I don't remember what happened, but in Kumula, my mom, us keep her in clean, Sonke, all of us. Mm. There's like four girls, uh, and all of us were just out, and the house left burning the end, yeah. Did, did you not live like in, in fear? Because you understand, okay, this is my dad, okay, he's, he's a bit of a monster, but in a way, you're like, maybe all fathers are like that, I don't know. But do you not live in fear that your mom will get hurt and then your mom's not around, which uh, is devastating? Obviously, I, w I mean, I was still young at that time, but I mean, the fact that we, could, we, we would cry when my, we see our mom crying was uh, a little bit uncomfortable for us, you know? Uh, so there's nothing we would do. No There's nothing we would do at that time. But, you know, my grandmom was there, you know, to support us. That's why I think, I think that's the reason why we actually moved to Orange Farm yeah. to stay with my grandmother. Yeah, so... Hey, it was hectic, hey? It was really hectic. You said you went to your dad's funeral because he's your dad, okay, let's bury him. But at the funeral, do you, what questions are you asking yourself about your dad? Um, why, why, why did you leave mom to raise us, Ayedwa? Why were you such an abusive person? And why, did you, why didn't you make time for us? Because I mean, I feel like if you, because now I'm a mom, I understand how is it to be a parent, you know, and loving your kids. And uh, it's really important for your kids to actually have both parents. Mm. So I, I, at that time, when I went to the funeral, I, I, honestly speaking, I, I, I can't say I didn't care because this is my dad, you and know? It, even if you've, Seen him for one day in yes. your life. Yes. He's your DNA. He's, my blood. Yeah, absolutely. He's your dad. And it's and I think it must be so difficult to mourn something you've never really had. Right? Because you ask yourself, what what am I mourning? What am I crying for? 
Yeah, but I think w one of the biggest things that would actually com comfort me was being told, you know, but I'm like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe standard, but hey, whatever happened, happened, and thank you for seeing. Mm. Yeah. So, um, from Orange Farm to the world. <laughs> yes! <laughs> to the whole world. <laughs> what about Orange Farm? Because here's the thing, you know, people say Orange Farm, and it's like, ah, shame, but tobacco Orange Farm. Because <laughs> they're always being depicted as like the bottom end of society, right? Which is actually very true, Anele. It's, but I mean, if, if the bottom end is producing someone like you, and I know you are an anomaly, not everyone from Orange Farm is going to end up like you, but the fact that one of you from Orange Farm ends up like you, it means that, you know, it's not exactly like, you know, the armpit of the universe, right? But... Surely there's something in Orange Farm that then builds this, this texture, this, this thick skin that you have, this resilience, this love of self. What, what in Orange Farm is the ingredient that then gives us this? Honestly speaking, I think it's about, it's about you as a person. Because mm. I grew up without a, mo uh, without a dad. I was raised by a single uh, parent, which is my mom and my grandmother as well. So mm. in, at that time, I could actually, you know, because we never really had anything you know, everything rather, you mm. know, uh, we, we grew up with my sisters, four, four of them, and uh, my mom used to struggle a lot because he was, you know, she was really unemployed, like for the longest time. Mm. And uh, she would hustle her way through to, for us to get everything that we want. And that could, I could, I could, I could tell sometimes, right? And I was like, this is not me in the next five years. I don't want oh. to, to, to be this girl. I don't want to be, you know, uh, the same person in Jongo Mawam. And I'm not saying she's a, she's a failure. Uh, and she can't be a failure because she's done so much. you also want to take her out of this. Yes, yeah. I want to be the, that girl. Otsi, so I'm my family gatherings. And also, I learned a lot from my mom, you know, being disciplined, you know. Uh, discipline goes a long way. I still not mind because I was taught to I think the biggest thing that I've learned from my mom is being independent. Yes. One of the greatest thing, I own and I feel about independence. Yo, uh -huh. But Growing up with your mom and your grandmother, and now you're speaking about discipline. When you were in trouble, were you ducking the club from left, right, and center? Because you know how you know how grandmother. I still am, but I need to manage in the class. <laughs> you know, I, I, I used to be bitten a lot at school, you know, because uh, of uh, apparently I you know, I, I, I never used to love being around people that I that I don't, you know, uh, how do I put it? I never liked being, I never li liked friends, Nji, mm. you know, I, 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 I'm really close with my sisters and my sisters are like my best friends. Yeah. So someone from outside, I really, I don't understand their vibe, I don't understand them, I don't want to be next to them, so, mm. so I would get bitten for that, you know. So I would get bitten for that, you know. That's when, I, I actually, you know, actually the makeup artist will tell you, I said, please cover all my freckles, I don't want them to show on TV. But they're beautiful. I know, but also, I guess I grew up with that saying, Okay. Movie with freckles and whatever, and that actually, uh, you know, um, it's still in, you know, in my mind, yeah. and it's still within me. Gucci, actually, we all have freckles, but I've seen uh, the likes of Nonikas and Cizira, they they embracing exactly. them, you know, they loving them. I'm, but dude, with me, I I, I, there's, sorry, there's actually days where I I feel like actually I'm planning if one of my freckles, I'm going to an interview with I'm a freckles one, but. 80% of the time, just like, no, please cover them. But then it's an because improvement from 100% of the time, right? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes. So every, every time, every day, you're learning to then deal and, and yes. learn and love with who you are. Absolutely. Okay. So you're saying your mother and your grandmother never used to because you were already getting the beating from yeah, school. Yeah, I would come back home and say, Ma, I'm shy when I went I stood there to go back from Shaiksas and I learned from them, you know, because they would just say, I'm never going to go back to school and yeah. say, And now, <laughs> at least, <laughs> you know, something, <laughs> at least. Okay, so listen, after the break, uh, there's one thing that her mom said in an interview which I found to be so beautiful. We're going to talk about it. The mom said, I want Dando to be like me, but I also want her to be nothing like me. After the break, we find out what she was talking about. It is life-changing. You want to hear this? Come back.
And welcome back. Ndando Duma's personal life has not been without public scrutiny. Her Umemulo, the traditional Zulu celebration and the rite of passage to womanhood, was soon shrouded with controversy. Her relationship with the child's father was the talk of the town. And when they stopped posting pictures about each other, the rumor mill, ooh, obviously everyone is like, hi, when's I get when's I get lawyer? <laughs> She's also faced backlash for her parenting skills, getting crits for posting pictures of her body whilst pregnant, and some thought she was too sexy. And then still of her baby girl smash people had things to say about Fatty Monroe where to we're gonna talk about all of that so you find out you're pregnant yes you do a pregnancy test and then it says no and then a week later you're like hey, hey something's still going on here what can I actually tell you Wuti uh, before I I even broke my virginity yeah. I knew I was gonna fall pregnant after breaking the virginity no I'll tell How you why you I'm know saying, that? I'll tell you why so me and Uchunia, father of my child yeah. um, we started calling each other randomly. Uh, well, he bought me a teddy bear, and I called the teddy bear Usbatli. I'm like, Usbatli, wa, Usbatli, wa. So when he calls, like, Baba Usbatli, like, Maga Usbatli. And we, yeah, it was like that. On, and, and, you know, it, it's so amazing to see that actually the universe does listen. Yeah. You know? Uh, so we started calling each other, Maga Usbatli, Baba Usbatli. We never called each other baby, love. None of that. We started calling each other, Maga Usbatli, Baba Usbatli, and we named the teddy bear Usbatli, you know? And then it happened. And it's like, whoa, Spatla's arrived. <laughs> Spatla is in the building. Whoa. Jesus, you know, I actually felt that there was something wrong with my body. Uh, so I, I told um, Junior's sister, like a cousin, a sister friend, yeah. to say, actually, please, I'm not really sure about this, uh, but I think I am pregnant. Uh, and I went to buy the pregnancy test. I, I, I bought three. And they all said negative. And I bought another one. I was like, no, I need to go and buy. I need to see it saying positive because I know I am pregnant. Oh, wow. My boobs are like, boo. That's when social media went crazy to say, yo, your boobs, did you do a bull jump? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> you know? Uh, and I did a pregnancy test for the, like 10th time and it said positive. Why do you believe the one and not the nine? Because I know my body, I know myself. Uh, I, I, I knew there was something wrong. Uh, uh, but all also, right. Uh, well, yes, right. Uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. actually. Uh, so I, I, I took all of them and then oh, I took the 10th one, the 10th one said positive, and the next one said po negative. I was like, okay, maybe I need to get the real one, the clear blue. Yeah, yeah. And the then, one that even tells you which yes, day you are. Yes, you know? <laughs> So, uh, like, after, then I told you, and I was like, ah, no, man, okay, let's wait for another week. Yeah. And then we did wait. But while waiting, I'm like, ah, Aman, there's a baby inside me. There's something breathing oh. inside me. There's actually, I, I'm about to become a mom, you know? And I went randomly after cleaning the house in the morning, I went to buy the clear blue one now. Mm. And I'm like, are you ready, Brazil? I call him, like, are you ready? And then, and I was really excited about it. I don't know why, but I was really excited more than being nervous, you know? Because, I mean, when you're like 21. Well, you're not even nervous to tell your mom. I, honestly, I, I wasn't. Uh huh. I, 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 well, a little bit, though, you know, because it was just after Umemuno, you yes, know? Okay. <laughs> so uh, I was just getting maybe sort of saying, Umemuno. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I loved when she said that when it comes to being a mom, she wants you to be like her and to be like nothing like her. When she said to be like her, she wants you to be as strong she, as her. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, she's such a strong woman, phenomenal. She, she's, she's amazing. She would do anything for me and my sisters. Mm. She would take a bullet for, for everyone, mm. like uh, Osis, Bami, mm. you know. She would, she would die for us because she really does love us. Okay, when she said she wants you to be nothing like her, because obviously her and your dad didn't stay together. So she was saying that she hopes that you and Junior stay together. And now you're not. How is she handling that? She's fine with I mean, she's fine when I'm fine. And when I'm not, she's not. Okay. Yeah, she's, she's that, yeah, well, I can say, uy, uy, mene, mene, li, li. Uy, chameleon. Yes, okay, basically. Okay, she you know? molds into so when, I, when I'm fine, she's fine. When I'm not, she's not. But she will try by all means to make sure that she, I, I'm okay, mm. you know? So. Okay, but now, how are you and Junior? Are you guys fine? You've got Usibatli. Are you co-parenting well? We are absolutely co We are broken up, just, you know, just to make sh sh things clear and people understand. We've broken up when I was, yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's a year and months now yeah. since we've broken up. And I'm fine with it now. And I'm actually glad that I can speak about it now. Because at first I was like, uh-uh. Uh, no, I was really crazy. Yeah. I, was, I was so in denial because I really thought 
because he was the first, yeah. and I really thought he was going to be the yeah. last. I, I could see future with Junior. Yeah. And, whew, unfortunately, you know, things... Didn't work out. Yeah. But obviously, you weren't happy. And both of you weren't happy. And if you are unhappy together, it's not good for your child. We, we weren't... We, 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 I can't say we were both not happy in the relationship. I think I was, you know, Juno's such an amazing man. You know, mm. he knows how to love. That I cannot deny. And he knows how to, you know, take care of, take good care of, um, oh, well, he used to take good care of me. <laughs> you know, and he's very smart. So that's one thing I like about him. But what I realized is, you know, men are all the same. You know, sometimes, they, we all make mistakes, you know. I make mistakes. He does as well. But we can't blame each other and say, who is the story? You better mind that we're not longer together. He's such an amazing person. I'll, I'll never, ever take that away from him. Mm. And uh, he's the father of my child. And you don't come to me and say, oh, Junior, <laughs> This person is the father of my child. <laughs> Even though we're no longer together, you know, he made his own mistakes and I did mine as yeah. well. And uh, it's actually great that we decided, let's call it a quits, because I'm just tired of fighting. Because mm. also, also at times I would feel like I'm in a relationship alone, mm. you know? Mm. So also putting effort when the next person is not, not. Yeah, and also he would probably feel the same as well. But I was like, la le la We are very, very mature. So Babili. Mm. Right? We can do this co-parenting well, and we are actually doing He He loves his child. Okay. We both do. Okay. I'm happy you're happy. I'm happy. Okay. I'm happy. Listen, obviously you are sending WhatsApp voice notes left, right and centre. And we're going to take some questions from the audience. We'll be back after the break for all of y'all. And we're going to play a game. And we're going to speak about the trendy music television gig that the lady has got that she's busy with in 2018. We'll be right back. Come back with us. Welcome back. We've reached the final segment of the show. And if you just tuned in, we're hanging out with Dando Duma. As I mentioned earlier on the show, she surprised many of us when she featured alongside, oh, babes, what do we in a track? Jaiva, pairs compared. And if you've not seen it, then where have you been? You've been living under one very big rock. But because we love you and we'll play it for you just so you can catch up before Dando and I chat about it. Roll it. Who called who for that song? I just, I want to know how this call went. This wasn't a song. It was just me playing around. I was in Durban, I remember in December 2016 with my sister. Uh. And she didn't want to go to the beach. I was like, and if you've, you've been following me, on, if you've been following me on Instagram, you know how crazy I am. You know, I take all these random videos and people actually get excited when I do. And hey. it's like, you know, <laughs> just for you guys. Anyway, <laughs> so I, 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 I was playing Prince KB Wajela on the background and I started dancing on top of the bed and my sister was sleeping. I started singing, Java Pez Gompete, oh Java Pez Gompete, and it's, and when I go to my MCing gigs, people just say, Java Pez Gompete, I'm like, oh, okay. So Gunji, okay. And then I started doing it, doing it, doing it, and then babes called me to say, Duma. La la la. Actually, I love the song of it. I'm like, this is not a song, babes. Like, yeah, I want to, I want to make it a song. I'm like, okay, I don't want to do music. Do it. Give me the money. Just, ah! you know? <laughs> I'm like, no, actually, it would be lovely for you to be part of the, 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 the song. Like, me, singing. I, okay, hey, maybe it's not singing. It's just not, we're singing. I love it. The video's crisp. It's fresh. It just I it looks know. fun. I had so much fun shooting the video. Yeah. Uh, that was like five months after I gave birth to Spatly. And uh, yeah, it was just amazing. You also, know? Yes, there's a voice note about her baby fat. Can you please play that now that you're talking about wearing lingerie and then... Do we have it? Yes, no? Please, please, please. Oh. 
How does she keep that banging body even after giving birth? <laughs> she looks amazing. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your question. Honestly speaking, I, I, I can't say I go to the gym because I don't. I hate gym so much. Uh, but I think it's just jeans. You know, it's just jeans. Mm. Yeah. Also, there's nothing special about me. I'm just a skinny girl, you know, who, who takes good care of herself. We hate you. Uh, <laughs> Love you too, Anele. <laughs> Audience, would you talk? Hello, I would like to ask Ntanto uh, Duma. I always hear Phil Mpela and other entertainers in the Republic of South Africa, about 10% of the entertainers, uh, talking about the injustices uh, that is done by, by, the, by the production companies in the Republic of South Africa mm. that are faced by, 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 by the entertainers. So I would like to know, why is it only few that, has, that are not afraid to, to, to speak up? Mm. What would it take yeah, for the entertainers in the Republic of South Africa to actually speak in one voice? Mm. Because if they don't do that, it's going to be difficult for the upcoming entertainers. Because if you don't create a better future for mm. other people, or maybe your children or your grandchildren, who should? So I would like to know, why are they so quiet? Why would, what would it take? for okay. them to stand up for their Let own rights. answer it. <laughs> Dando? Okay. Honestly, uh, I, on my side, you know, I can't speak about something that has never happened to me. And if it's hanging fagas in Dabasaban, you know, I'm that girl. If it's not my business, I'm not part of it, you know. So it's, it, honestly, on my side, uh, uh, personally, it has never happened to me. So I can't really say much about it. Mm. But for those people who have happened to, uh, that, uh, uh, for those people who are uh, that, wow. <laughs> so, um, uh, for those people who uh, uh, that has happened to them, um, they are, I don't know why, I can't speak for anyone. I can't speak for anyone. But for those who are actually speaking about, uh, about it, it's mm. great. They're helping the, the, you know, the people who, uh, you know, aspiring ones who wants to get into the entertainment industry. But for me, it has never happened, so I can't really say much. All right. Yeah. Um, quickly, let's go to you. Um, quickly, Ntando, um, what message do you have for the nine-year-old girl that's now watching from oh. an orange farm who lives in a shack? Wow. Uh, it is possible. It is possible. Make sure that you... Because, you know, one thing that people don't understand is that uh, you actually have to dream and make the dreams, your, uh, make the dreams reali a reality, you know? Don't just dream and sit back and say, ah, you have to work hard for what you want. So have dreams, wake up, and make them happen. All right. Listen, we want to uh, donate a thousand rand to your favorite charity, but you have to earn it. Wow. Put your hands in there. What's in here? Yeah, put your hands in there. Uh, look, you have to feel it out. You have to take it to feel it and then tell us what it is. And when you get it right, you'll take it out. And then, so if you get three, we'll give you a thousand rand for your charity. Okay, cool. Okay, put your hands inside, there on the side. Both hands? Both hands in. Oh, okay, some awesome. of them are alive, so just be careful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> And it wasn't <laughs> what's, that? what's that? Okay, this is like Kiki. I get to begin, Mara. In a little sparkle, so in a little cha 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 cha, mcha cha cha. But it's like, what is it? I can't. I okay, don't know take it out. You write it like a dinky toy. Yes, yes, there we go. Uh, next one. Uh, okay. Huh? <laughs> that one moves. There's a snake. Okay, it's a snake. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then last one. Is that man? Ah, ah, ah. Potato. Ah, ah. I'll put it back. It's not oh. a It's a kiwi. You have to do another one. You have to do another one. Okay. Well, I love cooking, so I... Closer to here. Yes, closer. Move it here like this. Yes, what's that? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No. Ah. Ooh. Ooh. What is this? Jesus. It's mean. It's me. Take it out. <laughs> it's mean. <laughs> It's been, okay. We'll give it to, we'll give it to your charity anyway. Yay. You can tweet us to who you want to send it out to. Round okay. of applause for Ndando, guys. Oh, that was so much fun. Listen, this was some real talk with Ndando. Fleeky, so Duma, definitely one of the leaders of the new wave of cool kids in the industry block. If you missed the show, tomorrow, the repeat is still at the same time, 9 a.m. We'll see you tomorrow where we discuss relationships with Kofi and some other interesting guests. From us at Real Talk, have yourself a beautiful evening. Stay tuned. Isitingo is up next. Bye. <laughs>